Hi and welcome to this lesson. In this video, we'll dive deeper in understanding how the plugin features work. So we'll keep referring to the demo page as well as the documentation in order to improve your understanding of this plugin. So let's get started. So let's now start off by talking about the search feature. So again, in order to implement search, we need to go to input forms and click and drag the Algolia simple search element onto the page like so. And automatically the property editor of the search element pops up. And as you can see, we have several fields that we'll need to complete, such as the index name. And this is basically the name of the index as seen in your Algolia dashboard. And next we have the query field. And here we'll basically need to insert the value of an input field. So for example, we can have an input field placed on the page, which is called input A. So for the query field, we'll need to insert the value of input A like so. So the user will type in text within this input field and that text will be used to search through the database. And after that, we have type of content and here we can insert our goal you result. And this is basically a type that has been provided by the plugin itself. Then next we have fields to retrieve. Now, when you look at the documentation, on this example, we can see that the fields are basically separated by a comma. And here we're basically specifying which fields we want to retrieve from our Algolia database. So in this example that we see on the screen, we can see that a couple of fields are being retrieved, such as the title, the description, the icon, the zero code URL, and the demo page URL of the plugins index. And we're going to see an example of that in just a bit. But of course, there are more fields that you can learn about. And within the documentation, you can read more about them, as you can see right here. So let's now see how everything is set up within the demo page. So just to refresh your memory, when you go to the demo page, we have a text input here and we have a list of plugins. And these plugins are inside this database, as you can see within this Algolia dashboard. So the data has already been added with all the fields that we need. Now let's see how these work together within the demo editor. So within the demo editor, we have this Algolia symbol search element, which is called A. And as you can see, we have the index name, which is plugins. And that's because the index within Algolia database is called plugins as well, as we can see here. So whatever index that you want to search through, it's important to use the same name within the property editor. And just to clarify what an index is, an index is simply a place where data is stored within Algolia. And it's equivalent to a table in a database. And according to Algolia's documentation, you can create up to 1000 indices by default. And then for the query field, we're basically inserting the value of this input field. And then for a type of content, again, it's set to Algolia result. And the fields we want to retrieve would be the title, the description, the icon, the zero code URL, the demo page URL, and the object ID. And when we hop inside the Algolia dashboard, we can see that these are the fields that we're basically retrieving from our Algolia database and into our app. And this is how the fields look on the demo page. As you can see, we have the plugin title here, we have its description here, and we have the icon image right here. And the zero code URL is within this button and the demo page URL is within this text. So let's now talk about how to update an object within your Goya database. So firstly, you'll need to have an element or an icon on the page that will trigger the update action. And within the demo editor, we have this material icon placed on the page. And when we click to see its workflows, we can see that it mainly opens a pop-up, which is this one, where it allows the user to insert the details that they wish to update. And when we look closely, we can see that there's a save button. And when that save button is clicked, we can see that we are basically updating an object only when the user is actually updating an existing item and not creating a new one. And within this property editor, we can see that we have the application ID placed within this field. And this is taken from the Algolia dashboard. And we have the index name here. And this time around, we're not working with the plugins index, but we're working with the books index. And next we have the object ID. 
And this is important because with this ID, we're basically telling Algolia which object we want to update. And within the body or content field, here we're basically specifying all the fields that we wish to update. So in this case, we have all the fields here, and we can see that for each field, we have a specific input field element that's taken from the pop-up. And to make things easier for yourself, you can always come here and copy this action in order to add it within the workflows of your own application, but obviously you'll need to change these fields in order to match them with your own. And in a nutshell, that's basically how objects are updated with the Algolia plugin. So let's now talk about how to add or create new objects within our Algolia database. So again, you'll need to have an icon or an element that triggers this action. And in the case of our demo editor, we can see that when this plus icon is clicked, this pop-up gets shown. And of course, it allows the user to add a new book by completing these fields. And after the user fills in these fields, this button gets clicked and it's the one that actually triggers the action that creates a new object. And as you can see, it's this action right here. But this action only gets triggered when the user is not editing an existing item. And within this fields, we have an application ID, which is taken from the Goya dashboard. We have the index name, in this case it's books. And within the body field, we have all the values that the fields of this object should have. In this case, we have the name, the author, original language, first published, and so on. And we are assigning the value of these input fields to the specific object fields. And just like that, a new object will be created within the Algolia database. So let's now talk about how to delete an item from our database. So obviously, we'll again need an element or icon in order to trigger this action. And here we can see that this delete icon is placed. And when this icon gets clicked, it will trigger this action that deletes the object. And when we look within this action, we can see that again, we have the application ID here. We have the index name here. And most importantly, we have the object ID here. And again, this specifies which object we want to delete from our database. So that's really all there is to it in order to delete an object. And another feature that the Algolia plugin has is called recent searches. And this basically stores the recent keywords that a user inserted in a query and you can show those keywords like this so that the next time a user comes back, he can conveniently click on the keywords to revisit the results they recently searched for. And that creates a great search experience for users. So let's now see how this is implemented within the demo page. So here we have a repeating group and we can see that the type of content is set to text and within the data source field, we can see that we are assigning all the unique suggestions of this simple search element. So when the value of this input field is changed, we can see that within the workflows, we are initiating the recent searches action. And the element is set to the simple search element that has been placed on the page. And the query field is left empty. And if the query field is left empty, then that means that the status will contain all recent searches. So in other words, this repeating group will contain all the recent keywords that were searched by the user. And that's basically how recent searches work. And the last feature that we want to discuss is the ability to filter. So as you can see within the documentation, filtering allows your users to drill down and create a smaller, more manageable set of data based on meaningful categories. So in other words, your users can utilize categories in order to filter through your database. So for example, if you have a library of books, you can have genre categories to allow your users to filter through your library of books by genre. Or if you have an online store that sells clothes, you can categorize your database by gender. So in other words, shoppers can filter through your stock by opting to look for clothes that are for females or males. So in a nutshell, that's how filtering works. So we now have a better understanding of how these features are set up within a bubble app. But in an upcoming lesson, we'll see how to use them in a real example. So we can now go to the next lesson.